So I'm, I'm going to try to kind of quickly share with you just a few insights about journaling with family. And um, <clears throat> the, uh, this isn't a bragging session um, where I said like, I just did like, all this awesome stuff. My kids are just, because sometimes they were into it and sometimes they really weren't, right? There were times that they, it was clear like, you know, I don't want to bring my nature journal bag with me on this hike because I don't feel like nature journaling right now. And, you know, it's hard for me because I take that really personally. <laughs> like, like, it's a rejection of me and everything that I stand for. Um, no, they just didn't feel like doing it then. But um, I had to sort of kind of grapple with that because, you know, a lot of my identity has ended up being kind of wrapped it up right now in nature journaling. And I was going there to nature journal. And, um, you know, the... Uh, it, uh, you know, sort of accepting that as it was not a rejection of, of me and my values. Um, but uh, that was, that was, that was interesting. There are times that they, they were totally down with it. Um, but uh, let's say kind of the most dramatic, like, oh, this is a disconnect, um, uh, was there was, there's, there's a bird called the Andean cock of the rock. And it's this big and it's orange and black and white. And it has this huge comb over that it does like an Elvis pompadour. And um, if you get up very, very early in the morning, you can go, you can find these in the lek where the, all the males are just playing to each other. So come down there, got to the, the, this, little, this little hide, the little blind. And uh, you wait for it, you wait for it. And they were kind of back there in the trees. And, um, the, um, but, but sure enough, there, there they were. And we've since found that there's a place where they're even closer, which is where, when we go with the Vea, we're going to visit. But, um, so the girls were observing with their binoculars. We were doing, I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of. And then um, they sat down on some stumps and started drawing in their journals. I thought, all right, um, well, Carolyn, was um, doing something that was really cool, that she was drawing a picture of the cock of the rock as she kind of envisioned it from looking at photographs and from talking about it beforehand, and then comparing that with what she actually saw. Like, I thought it was this, and then I saw that, and now I think it's this. And that was really cool. Um, Amelia was like working furiously um, uh, in her journal, and um, I was really excited to see that. It turns out that she was, making a list of all the different types of candy that you can get at the candy shop in um, the Harry Potter stories. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, but um, there that, and, and, and at first I was really, I was really disappointed. Um, but, um, I also, this is one of these things where if I try to push it on her, um, it's, it's not going to work out. Um, there were times that we, uh, we really engaged with the, with, with, with nature sort of together as a group. And I want to share with you kind of an activity that I came up with that worked really well. In Ecuador, there's a ton of frugivorous birds, so birds that eat fruit. And so what people, what local farmers have figured out that they can do is they can just get, make a little wood frame and put bananas up on it. And the birds will come to those and chomp these things. And then um, bird watchers will pay you to come onto your site and sit in chairs with the smorgasbord of birds and toucans and things up in front of them. And so um, we're at one of these sites where there's the, there's the log and it's just bird, 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 bird. And so what we, um, like if, if I, I, earlier I tried to figure out like at, at another sort of similar site, I'm like, okay, like which one is that? And you know, it was doing the sort of bird ID thing. And the girls weren't really having it. And so this time what I tried is I said, all right, oh, that one is really cool. What should we name it? 
And the girls came up with a name, right? That one is, that is Sunny because it is yellow. That's Sunny, right? There's Sunny, all right? So Carolyn named that one, all right? So Amelia, you get the name of the next one that pops up. See, they're in these mixed species feeding flocks. So it's not just like a whole bunch of one thing, but it'll be all these different species that'll show up side together. So the next one shows up, Amelia gets to name that one. And then we're trying to, so to keep our, our name sort, we're in our journals, making quick little diagrams of the shapes of all these different birds and the colors that are on them so that we know that, okay, no, that one's sunny. And so I'll show you, um, here is my journal page from that experience. But this kind of idea of everybody gets to, you should get to name your bird. Um, let's see. Um, there, that was, was, was this day. So all these things, except for the blue parrot without a tail, um, all these things are showing up. And so this is fishy and sunny and rotten lemon and lightning and bean and sunset and tree also known as forest floor, this is spotty. So these are all these different species of, of, of tanagers. Um, and they were so down with this. They loved it. And um, then later on, I would just sort of, they, they would see one of these birds pop up and they're like, there's fishy, right? So they, it doesn't matter if we're using the, um, Ornithological Union's latest name for it. That was fishy. And for me, that'll always be fishy. Um, and um, so that, uh, that was an activity that really engaged them. And it was really fun because the whole family was sitting there together, calling these things out and naming them. And like, like, like oh, sunset's back, sunset's back. Sunset just had this ridiculous head. Um, I still won't get to color in um, the whole sunset down here. I've got a few kind of color notes on here. That's a sunset drawing that was aborted because it kind of got the head shape wrong. Uh, but I'm going to redraw a sunset down there. It was just a, that was a ton of fun. Show you another thing that really engaged the girls with the journals to kind of make it a little bit more kind of connect them personally with the, the journaling experience. Is that as we were as we were going along? One second. Um, what I what I started doing is sort of making little doodles of with us in them. So here's a little sketch of me sitting on a chair, the toucan flying into a feeding station this far from me. And this is Carolyn behind me with a little cup, red cup in her hand, hand feeding hummingbirds. And so just putting this little doodle of her in here, I said, look, I put you in. And then, so I'm doing this. Um, she's, she's got you know, her, her, her game on, hand feeding hummingbirds. So putting her in the book, um, really made um, the ex sort of helped her sort of see like there's this sort of this diary relationship between uh, what we're doing. Um, so here is uh, Carolyn making friends. There's this uh, center where they're raising uh, all these butterflies, this huge diversity of butterflies. And if you dip your fingers in rotten bananas, then the butterflies land on your pants. And that's just too much fun. Um, Amelia, meanwhile, was saving butterflies that were trapped in vegetation or caught in the water and naming them. So kind of back here when we were naming those, uh, oh, and it goes the other way. When we were naming those, those birds, doing the same thing with the butterflies. So Bob, Fred, and Freddie. Uh, Bob was stuck in the water, same with Fred. Freddie was stuck in the vegetation, and Susie was stuck in the leaves. And so she was catching these butterflies and sort of drying them out. And I, she um, used my journal to make a little list of her butterfly rescue operation. Um, 
So see that you could put that in his journal and that daddy wanted to put that information in his journal. But I wanted to put this sort of event in the journal. Um, made it even more fun and accessible for them. Um, this is this is uh, uh, probably this afternoon, we're going to work on these sort of sketches. I'm going to flesh them out with a little bit of pen and watercolor. But Amelia found this little hummingbird that was had been trapped inside a building for a day or more and was at death's door, hypoglycemic, couldn't lift its head and couldn't open its eyes. And it was just this old fluffed out. And she got a little cup, cap full of sugar water and nursed this thing back to health, sticking its beak into this until its little tongue came out and then started drinking more and then drinking more and then it got, it could sit up and it fluffed itself down a little bit. And then it could sit up even more and look around with its eye open, totally sleep down. And, um, and then it opened its wings and flies off. So here's a little sketch then of Amelia in there with these sketches of the hummingbirds. See, with this, it's like, oh, we're just looking at the hummingbirds, the hummingbirds are the thing. But a big part of the thing is that, you know, you're there having this experience together and this happens. So, that gets full sort of made so realize that I wanted sort of nature journal our interactions together with these species. And um, that that made the, 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 the difference. Um, to share with you a, a final page. Um, here they are, there's the adventure girls. Um, I talked to them about, you know, what of their kit did they find the most useful and what did they wish they had with them when they were out there. So some of these things are things that they have and some of these things that are sort of being the Ecuadorian uh, adventurer that they would like to be. Oh, Carolyn's new nickname, by the way, is Mot Mot um, because she was our Mot Mot spotter. So here's little Mot Mot with Mot Mot. I mean, how cool to have a bird named Mot Mot um, it's just, it's so much fun to say. So now, yeah, she, her new nickname uh, is not just mouse, uh, but it's also mot mot and also fruit bat. Um, and, and, and life is good. So those are, um, and then, so then I've got, um, they signed these and, um, you know, Amelia says, hummingbirds are colorful and trusting. Ellen says, very good. Um, and uh, so those were a few ideas about journaling with the team from this last adventure in um, in Ecuador. And so what I thought would be fun to do is just sort of throw this open to a discussion um, about what works for you, what sort of strategies do you have um, that uh, sort of keeps the brain in play um, and that balance about sort of the gentle push to, yes, let's do some nature drilling um, to where you overstep and like you will nature journal now, right? Um, and and how, to, how do we balance that as, um, as sort of loving caregivers of our youngsters? Um, love to have your thoughts, comments, and ideas. Let's uh, bring in Kate in. Um, hey there. Um, let's see if we can figure out how to allow you to. All right, I love this topic because this is exactly what I am. I decided to start to do because I haven't been teaching in a while. So I decided to start um, every weekend just inviting families to come join me at the local playground. And then so the kids can choose to be at the playground and I bring art supplies for the parents and it's been really, really lovely. And one of the um, really fun activities that I've done with the girls is <laughs> that I have them draw maps and because, you know, we talked a lot about maps, but what we did was they just drew random because I have a dot grid notebook and they just drew these random, random maps, just like 
triangle, square, whatever, you know, and then they would try to follow those maps. And what was really neat is when we did it camping is that they found all these different like secret hidden grottos and they named all of those places that they went and explored and found um, through this just map that they, you know, just magically randomly made up. And so, it was so, so kind let of, me it was, make sure I understood. So you're you're randomly generating a map and then that, that takes you through the forest on an adventure following it. Yes. Yeah. So they did that for like an entire afternoon just and then they described all the places that they found and there was one that they said oh my gosh and then you know the map told us to go backwards and we were like how do we go backwards that seems so silly and they turned around and they said they turned around and they just saw this like magical play space and so they ended up crawling underneath the you know the the bushes and they were like oh we found this magical space because the map told us to go there and it was just kind of this really magical way to include um to find their way because what's i'm finding is that they you know so my daughter and her friends are all about fourth fifth sixth grade and so they're still in this imagination land and they're very scared of um nature journaling because they feel like art has to be realistic and they see what I do and they're a little intimidated. And so anything that is a little bit more abstract and more about trying to get them to explore. So we've done like blind contour drawing as a really great warm up because that looks so ridiculous. And then they, um, and then, you know, I'm like, okay, so you did that really quickly. You didn't look at your paper at all. Now see how great it looks when you do look at your paper and you take a little bit more time. And they're so excited, you know, because it's, it's such a contrast and it kind of breaks that, um, that fear down um but those are the two, only two because <laughs> and then they they end up going off and or or they'll just take the watercolor supplies and they just make big splashes of color all over the paper and they're you know and doing sort of things like that um so yeah i i love the idea of documenting the the birds that they see for us it's going to be mostly chickens and pigeons <laughs> where yeah. we are but i think that's like such a such a great idea so I'm, I'm excited to hear other people's ideas that is really really fun kate that reminds me of uh an evening where amelia made a map when she was very very small she made this a treasure map and so i said okay let's go follow it and she kind of looked at me with sort of this confused look and so, well, you know, and, and we, we ended up, yeah, you, you could, you can project, it's like an ink blot test, right? And you can project onto it sort of features that you're seeing around to us. And eventually it kind of led us out to where the X was um, on that, that, that map. And we got down and, and, and I, I had gone out, I'd forgotten what it was, but some sort of little treasure um, that I could palm in my hand. And so I just put my hand down on the, here's the ground and I pointed down on the ground. I said, oh, look at this. And so then, then that was, was there. And so we had followed their map and then there was treasure at the end. And, but also it sounds like in this sort of a thing, the treasure is those experiences that you're encountering all the way along. Hey, I love that idea. That's really fun. Um, let's, um, does anybody want to um, add or, or, or share on, on this? Um, um, what, what else is working with our youngsters? Uh, Billy Joe loves uh, your idea, Kate. Um, um, other thoughts, comments, and ideas for um, getting our journal on um, with our immediate family group? What has worked? What's not worked? Wow, um, I am going to bring in Lily Joe. Oh, there you are. Hey, everyone. Um, um, this is me learning how to like raise my hand and stuff today. <laughs> 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 so I haven't done this with my my daughters uh, specifically, although the map thing, I think my girls would go bananas over. I think that's such a cool idea. Um, but I've had some really small um, groups with um, like ASD groups where are on the autism dis uh, spectrum disorder or the general learning disabilities. So they're really, really small and maybe their, their writing isn't right up to par. So what I've been doing uh, with some of them is actually bringing in ink pads um, and getting them to actually make prints with the ink pads and so bringing in like they'll have leaves they'll have all this stuff and then they're able to make the prints or 
hold onto the ink pad and then blot around the edges so they'll get the silhouette of the leaf or whatever it is on the paper. So again, not having to really worry about the drawing the picture so much, but making it really attainable to be able to sort of do that. And then not having to worry about paint, right? Because paint can be a, a lot in some of these classes. Um, and then one of the things was I brought in actually like little animals and they were um, using the ink pads and doing their own tracks and so thinking about tracking and what that would look like on the paper um, has been like really cool for some of the um, the classes as well and and bringing in pine cones and like what what would that look like if you inked it or how could you roll the, the patterns and sort of look like that so bringing it down but just sort of letting them be sort of messy with it and you know a bunch of different things um like one of the the children who was um autistic was learning how to twist so he was learning how to take caps off of things and so i brought in an apple and i had um, cut the apple in half and he was doing apple prints and then he started twisting them and i was like that's cool like look at all the colors that you're you're working the teacher was like yes this is what his goal is is to learn how to twist and so here we are nature journaling and he's actually twisting which was pretty awesome so and i didn't even know that that was one of his goals so i've been trying to come up with some alternative ways to to do it without having to get them to write a lot of words some of them don't speak so some of them are nonverbal. some are you know just learning very simple words so it was interesting but so far those those two things have worked really good so just having a little bit of different medium um without you know like acrylic paints everywhere where we're making which can be awesome um but sometimes that can be a lot too especially if they're putting a lot of things in their mouth um this is um like kid friendly ink pads that are washable with water and soap which was really great so I just wanted to add that in is having a little bit of media and the ink pads are small. You can get them on Amazon. They have little lids and they're super lightweight. So we could kind of take them wherever we went as well, which was a great idea. So just wanted this, to add that in. This, this whole idea of just sort of, sort of playful mark making mm -hmm. um, with natural objects um, is such, that's a great invitation to be kind of looking around for like then you're looking out for what objects around here will make you know a, a yeah like we had, yeah we had fat i had feathers so that they were also feeling the texture of the feather and then we did like rubbings i'm sure everyone's mm -hmm. done like crayon rubbings and stuff before as well so we were doing that with the feathers and there was a few different things because then it's very sensory driven with some of the ASD classes um, and so they just were really loving the feel of sort of everything that was happening um, and then as a teacher you can go in and you can get them to to maybe let you know kind of what's going what they're thinking and you can do a little bit of scribing for them one of the students uh, didn't read in the general uh, in my one of my general learning disabilities class so i would say to him like what are you thinking and we would do it out loud and then he would say how do you spell it or how do i write that and so i know spelling's not a big deal but this kid is struggling just with the letter sounds right so then i would i would say to him these are some of the ones so your goal this week is to put up like a couple of questions and so i would help him write it down and then he would copy but he was doing such a great job with his observations. So he was really sticking with the picture part. And then I was assisting him with some of the words, right? Which was pretty great. So just a couple different ways of kind of knowing your kiddos and then kind of going from there. But I liked the, the that was the first time I had done the stamping before. So I like I really liked that. That's, that's a, a I, I love the sound of that. I love that. Um, yeah. The, um, <clears throat> And also that mark making is then, you know, that's the bridge into having a journal. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and all of them have journals. All these classes, they all, like I brought them all journals. So, and I work with them once a month so that we'll be able to like see as we progress through the year, they'll have a journal that they'll have everything in by the end of the year, which is also pretty awesome. So that's, that's really fun too, which is great. That is really fun. Yeah, that's really fun. I love it. Um, the uh, um, let's bring in Barbara on this conversation. Um, this might be an ex sort of tagging into. Uh, and add you in as a spotlight. Uh, this might be a tagging into Billy Joe's, or it might be 
um, a different thing. What do we got? Uh, hello, everyone. Um, yeah, I had my very first nature journaling workshop last week at the Charles M. Schultz Museum. And I just wanted to share that little bit of experience. So I don't have much to share as a teacher in regards of nature journaling, but it was very exciting and humbling at the same time, the experience. Um, so what went really worked really well uh, was also I made a map of the area we would go into beforehand. And I made a copy of that map and handed it out to all the kids and made sure they understood it. And then I sent them out and said, okay, I want everyone to collect at least three different leaves and then mark it on the map. Where did you find your leaf? So that was very successful. The kids loved that. And later, later on, uh, because it was a very long workshop, a little bit too long, uh, they had the idea of making sort of a scavenger hunt using that map. So they would hide, uh, find something and then hide it somewhere. And then another group of three kids sort of I would divide them in groups and then they would try to find the object. To be honest, that failed a little bit at the end, but I'm not sure if it was because it was just too long of a workshop and kids were there all day long and it was like 4 p.m. and they were just ready to go home. So that's what I meant with humbling. So I had some really good experiences and some that just things that didn't work out. What else really, what the kids really loved is that I gave them, uh, from the beginning, I showed them how I uh, start my nature journaling in uh, entries, which I learned uh, in your classes or in, in the workshops from different nature journalists here in this community. Um, so first a title and then that little cute little, the, the date, the time, you know, do we have sun or clouds and make it look really, really kind of cartoonish. Um, I think John, you sh Jack, you showed that to us once and they really loved that as well. And so, and then I also gave them the three objectives, basically find three things you notice, three things you wonder about, and three things that it rem reminds you of, or up to three things. So it gave them sort of like a structure um, where to go. So those things were very successful. And I just wanted to share that. That, that congratulations on your first nature journaling um, ex experience with them. That is terrific. And you know, there there will be in any day of things that we do, there will be things that go right and there'll be things that go wrong. And we don't want to beat ourselves up about those things that go wrong. They're just gonna be part of the package. Yeah. Um, those are just some of the eggs we have to break in order to kind of uh, make this this journal omelet work. Um, and uh, congratulations. That is really, really exciting. Yeah, it was exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Let's see, I'm going to bring in um, uh, Kim and then Rebecca. Um, I think this is Kim Delander Raid. Uh, let's bring, go right here. I had you in on a spotlight and we're going to then allow you to. Thank you. Ah, you're unmuted, great. Yeah, great, thank you. Um, great topic. Um, because I'm not a teacher and I have, it's my goddaughter's kids and I've taken them nature journaling a couple of times. I got them little notebooks, just cheap little com composition books and some little paint sets, paint sets I had at home. But it's tricky. I'm, I'm appreciative of hearing these other um, ideas from the teachers, but you know, it's not a class. And when they come over, Sometimes they want to go on a walk in the woods, but sometimes they just want to play in the house. Yeah. And, um, you know, so we've only gone a couple of times. And so I'm, some of these ideas might be fun ideas to try the next time we could say, oh, you know, shall we make a map? Um, because I think if I just say, oh, you know, usually they just draw one thing or two and then they just want to walk around in the woods, which is fine. I'm like all about like, Get in the woods, that's great. Yeah. Um, because we live in the city. So getting them out to the woods is great. Um, but I think you know it's a different thing when it's it's your kids and it's not a class. Their age range is big, um, you know, from like seven down to three. So there's different um attention spans. Um, so I'm I'm just appreciative to be here and that this was my first time and this was today's topic was on you know trying to get your own kiddos interested so nothing more to share but um, i'm pleased to be hearing from the other people it's 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 really fun to get everybody's ideas and also 
just we sort of realized that you know in the programs that we do or in the the times when I try to expose my kids to this, um, you know there are times that it doesn't go like you think you wish it had, and it's going to be okay. The um, I think that's something that I have to keep kind of sort of repeating to myself just because again so much of my identity I think is just sort of wrapped up in this nature journaling that I have to be really careful about. Like, oh, you're not into nature journaling right now? You don't love me, <laughs> you know? Um, so thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Rebecca, and hey there. Let's see, we're going to... Wait, hold on, you're currently muted. Now you're good. Okay. Yeah. So there's a, I didn't come up with this. There's a game that Bethan came up with. She, I saw, uh, she wrote a Facebook post about it one time and I've gotten the chance to try it out. Um, so she called the game search. So I think this is a really good one for either kids who like don't want to do nature journaling themselves, or maybe you don't have a journal, you know, for them with you at that moment, but basically you just say the game is, you know, you say search and then everybody has to go find like some kind of nature object and bring it back. And then she journaled it. And so I did, um, when I've had the chance to try this, I journaled it. And um, so like uh, when I was teaching the summer camp this summer and we were just waiting in the tent at the start of the day and they were bored and there's, we're just on the grassy lawn at that point. And they're like, oh, there's nothing here. And I'm like, well, there are some things here. Um, you know, like the little weeds and different plants that were growing in the grass and there were all these little insects. So it's like, okay, find something within the boundaries of the tent, because that's the other thing. I had to keep them in the tent because they, they wanted to keep going outside of the tent, but they weren't allowed. So um, yeah, I was like, find something. So they would like, and they're like, oh, well, here's a leaf. So then I kind of journaled it, but I talked through the process out loud. So I was like, okay, now I'm going to draw a little sketch. Like it doesn't have to be perfect, just getting the major shape and proportions. And now, now I'm going to, oh, what, here's what I notice about it with my senses. Like, what do you notice about it? And then I would write down what they, and it was kind of this collaborative effort. And I took them through the, like, I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of, and I was like, oh yeah, you're right. This leaf does look like the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And it didn't, uh, I tried it a few times. It didn't always work, but um, some of the times it was, they worked really well. Yeah. Um, and something that I like about that is they make an observation and then you honor that by, I'm going to then put that down in my sketch, either by, you know, I'm going to, you say that it's hairy. Oh, and I'm going to draw the hairs on it. Um, or just write, it's hairy. And you put that down. That is really respecting and honoring what they have brought in. Um, and when they're not in a place where, I also think that them watching you do that is going to increasingly get them to sort of start to go like, hey, I want to draw. I want to do that. And that that would be um, a nice um, way of just sort of normalizing this, um, the kind of note taking which we take. That's really fun. And then um, what Kim was just saying made me think, I, I put in the chat, but I could elaborate a little bit, um, is that I think it's more kind of shifting our mindset of like who, like our role in this situation is that, and in, we're more of a mentor than, or a guide than a teacher teaching, like here's our lesson, here's our lesson plan, it's gotta have this structure, this um, being more of a guide. And in general, I noticed I've started to think of myself more as like, a nature connection mentor than an environmental educator per se in the traditional way. Um, because I don't, the way I've been thinking about more and more in general is just that nature connection is the goal. Nature journaling is a tool to get us there. Um, it's, it's a very powerful tool, but it's not the only tool. It's one of many tools and it can be used in conjunction with a lot of other things. Um, so that's, um, yeah, and the thing about um, in Coyote's Guide to Nature Connection, it says kind of think of like 50-50, like probably when, even when you are teaching a lesson formally, it's like 
probably 50% will be your plan, but probably 50% will be improvised or be off of the plan. So I think just thinking about it in that kind of way can help a lot. That's great. And we are gonna have a full workshop on the idea of uh, nature connection. I'd love to, support. We, we, should, we should talk more about that. Thank you. Um, Danielle says, I call myself a creative nature guy. I like that. Um, let's bring in Ivea. Hey there. Hello. Um, I'm loving this discussion. So um, one of the things I was going to say is that um, something that I've done with my son uh, is because my son tends to, well, he's not as nature reluctant anymore as he was maybe a year ago, which I'm really thankful for. But one thing that really helped was to try what I've heard Jack call before priming. Um, and so that's that even if we're not outside in nature, I'll still work um, vocabulary and ideas from nature journaling and nature observation into our everyday conversations. So I find myself in like the most random time saying I notice or I wonder or especially it reminds me of and then I catch him mirroring that too and beginning to say that more and more um and so then talk and so um just finding ways of incorporating the ideas behind nature journaling into everyday talk or like when sometimes we'll draw together um or or now I've begun transcribing his school stories um, I'll type them up for him while he's telling me them. And so my hope is that then he'll do the same with nature a bit more and more. Um, we also, we also just like you like to do our naming of, of animals that we see. This one particular day, there was this lovely red admiral. I didn't know that that was what it was called at the time who landed on me. And, and I said, okay, Logan, what should we name this one? And we noticed the colors of, of, of this one. And at first I was like, what, what do you think about the name candy corn? And Logan's like, how about Halloween? So we named our butterfly friend Halloween, um, and and it endears us to people. I mean, there was this one time that Logan fell in love with this tiny little fruit fly that he named Hank, but he didn't know how to play with Hank properly, and so then Hank didn't make it, and he was sad. Like he cried for a while about it, and then he had me make Hank like a little fly coffin in a cup, and I was really moved by this. I mean, this is a fly, but it really is true what we pay attention to are the things we, we care about. So that was encouraging for me to see him do that. I, another thing, I put the link in the chat. Um, there was a post I made a while ago on Facebook about um, nature reluctant kids and some ideas with them. It, it's a very long list, but just a few to say is, well, first of all, aside from not forcing them um, because then they become more nature aversive. Um, another thing is to start where they are and to sort of try to find what they're already interested in and then somehow connect that um, with more about nature. Um, because sometimes there'll be kids that you have who just don't want to be forced into things. And so even if they might secretly think it's cool, they don't want to feel forced. And so when it makes it their own connection, then that's a big one. Um, so start wherever they are. I, I used to lament that my son wasn't as into nature as other kids. And I'd also take, just like you, Jack, I would say, oh gosh, I'm failing as a nature educator because my own son wasn't interested. And I had to stop thinking about the kid who I thought he should be and instead accept who Logan actually is. And after that, it got a lot easier to introduce him to things. Um, and then let's see here, where else? Um, I'm looking at my list to see if there's anything really, really big. Um, yeah, making time together to do art, doing drawing duets with them, like what you were doing with Amelia and them when, when they wrote some things down on your page. Um, sometimes, sometimes I'll draw something and I'll have Logan help me choose the colors for it. Um, and then he'll just start drawing on my page and I just go with it. Um, or, or I'll draw something and I'll say, does this look right to you? And I'll ask his opinion, like he's a professional art critic or like he's not even an art critic, but just like, does this look right? Am I, am I describing this accurately? Or I'll say, what would, word would you use to describe this? And so kids, a lot of kids really love helping their parents. So when you make them feel like they're being a helper, then they get more into it. I guess that you could call these like sort of subtle ways of getting them into it. Or another thing that I noticed that Jack did too is drawing your kids in your nature journal. Um, because then they're like, you put me in there? I'm in here? And then it, it gives them that feeling of significance and and or, or drawing challenges. That's another fun one. Let's see here. What else? Um, 
illustrated scavenger hunt can be really fun, especially if you're going to a nature place and you know that they may not be as interested. Then find the animal that's the most interesting them and make an illustrated scavenger hunt. So then they have things to look for or challenge them to do their own scavenger hunt where it's like find everything with stripes on it, everything with spots on it, everything that is green or whatever. Um, sometimes they like that kind of thing. Um, and then just other things like little chores, petting their cats, being around their cats, watering the plants. You can even phrase it as saying like, hey, you wanna go rescue the plants um, if they have like this kind of heroic thing. Or you could say, hey, you wanna make a tsunami on the plants if they like more mayhem and destruction. So if you find ways of framing it and having a lot of humor about it. Oh, one more, one more thing I didn't include on this list, but I'm gonna include it because Jack taught me the loves of this. Bad jokes, bad nature jokes, stock up on bad nature jokes and tell them and they will love you for it. Here's, here's one of my favorites and my son just rolls his eyes at me now, but I think he secretly likes it. Does anybody know what's brown and sticky? What is it, Jack? A stick! Yes! Was that what you were gonna say, Raybonto? <laughs> it's a stick. So, good. so yeah, find, find really awesome nature jokes to tell the kids and they won't be able to help themselves eventually. And I, and I think Billy Joe has something else to say, so I'm going to stop right here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, Amy Sides uh, also just uh, dropped one in the chat there um, that uh, is really worth your time for folks who are watching the recording. Um, can't see that. Uh, she says, uh, what did the fish say when it hit the wall? Damn. Okay, hey, Billy Joe. Uh, hey, so just going off of uh, a couple of other things that, that um, some other people have said, I just put it in the chat, but I always find like just saying yes, like there's that movie on Netflix, like yes day, right? So my kids are always like, if we could have a yes day, and so they'll ask questions like, can I do this? And like, yes, you know, can I write it this way? Yes. Can I color it this color? Yes. Even if it doesn't match it? Yes. And so they just like knowing that there's no sort of expectations that they can just be as creative as they sort of want to be, um, I always find is really encouraging. And I've found that to be really encouraging no matter the age level as well, um, which is good. I put in the chat a link to our website. Going on the naming, we came up with like a, a, a little funny uh, naming activity as well. Um, and in using the, um, the animal's adaptations to create the names. So is it a salamander or is it a slimy shade hider? You know, is it, you know, something I'm now I'm remembering. Is it a pine tree or a prickly snow catcher? Is it a warm or a slimy blind wiggler? Is it a burr or is it a sticky fur catcher? So kind of coming up, looking at the adaptations that or the the, you know, the characteristics of the thing that they're looking at, and then coming up with some kind of wild name that kind of goes with that, uh, which would be a really fun extension to everybody else, like adding those sort of fun names to things, you know, you could take it a step further, sort of using those characteristics, um, which has been really fun. Um, and all of those ones that are on our website, um, my children came up with. So um, I took all of their, I showed them the picture and I said, okay, what are we thinking here? Uh, and so they came up with all of all of those funny little, uh, little things so those are good those are good. yeah yeah and you could do it with anything right so anything any age and if you're looking for a title what a fun title right so come up with these sort of silly names and things like that so i just wanted to share that yeah, i and, do unfortunately oh go ahead yeah and, and some of those i think would also make you know the good name for your band yeah Well, my daughter's asked for a guitar for Christmas, so here's hoping. Who knows what she'll name it, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> all right. I have to go, everyone, but this is such a great topic. Thanks so much for uh, for doing this. I'll see you all next week. Hey, Bye. Joe. See you next week. Thank you so much for being here. See you next week. You're welcome. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh. oh, what fun. Um, hey, folks, it's about uh, 1 o'clock. Um, which brings us to the closing time for our Nature Journal Educators Forum. Before we do, just wanted to check in with the community here and see if there are any community announcements that other people had or things that they wanted to say that didn't get said um, that you might want to share with the group. Um, 
little uh, last opportunity to do so. And then we will be wrapping for today. If people uh, feel like it, uh, getting more of uh, kind of chilling with your nature journal community, um, we are going to have a workshop tomorrow um, on uh, where I'm going to share some. Uh, we're going to go back into that journal and show you some tricks that I learned um, to make my bird drawings better and uh, share those with everybody. And, um, and don't forget your pencil miles and chills um, if you want to get your kind of um, community on. Um, Rebecca, um, uh, here, I'm going to add you in. Hey there. Um, hold on a second, we have to, oh yeah, one second. It's this extra step that I always have to figure there out we how to find it, there we go. Hi, um, I just want to mention the um, upcoming uh, topics for writing workshop Wednesdays, which I forgot to mention earlier. So what I'm thinking is that next week will be about, um, find, about finding joy in nature and the things for like all the, all the letters of the alphabet that uh, bring us joy in nature at this time of year, especially since it's at least in where I am in the northern hemisphere, it's getting dark out a lot. Um, and then for the week after that, what I'm thinking about is uh, actually relates to today's topic here about um, family nature stories. And that's all, we, all, all ages are always welcome. But um, yeah, because a couple weeks ago, somebody, we were doing like free writing. And somebody was saying that the memories that were coming up for them about nature and like the moments that were important to them were uh, memories of them with their family members uh, or like people who were important to them. So I was like, let's do a top, let's do a time a session about that where we specifically write about um, like moments that we've had together with other people in nature. So that's what's coming up. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and those are, and, and really love the series that you have created. Thank you so much, Rebecca. All right then, everybody. Um, really appreciate everybody for being here. I'm gonna go over to my gallery view. Uh, if you feel comfortable turning on your um, screen, give everybody a wave goodbye. There we are. And thank you all for being here. Um, the uh, this 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 process of how we share this with our kids, you know, we're we're slowly together figuring out kind of best practices, and you know, we all make missteps in this, and uh, but we're getting better over time. Um, so if something doesn't go the way your lesson plan sort of hatched in your head, cut yourself a lot of slack. Remember that just if you are outside with the small people, you're way ahead of the game. You're way ahead of the game. <laughs> Everything else is gravy. You know, sometimes your nature journaling lesson plan goes, you know, involves, you know, uh, playing in the mud. Um, and sometimes, you know, it's this careful thing and you're making all these notes in your book. That's not always the way that it goes. And that's good. Um, thank you all. And uh, I want to just sort of uh, maybe kind of end on that wonderful point that Rebecca made for us to remember that the goal here is nature connection. The nature journal is a tool to that goal. Um, and um, whatever brings us closer and connects us with this amazing world with each other, um, that's successful. And uh, we, and, and, and more of that. Thank you all, be well. Thank you, Jack.